still very swollen on this side. And today is actually the very first day after like two weeks of this that I'm noticing it affect her personality a little bit. So we're about to go to the vet and we're gonna go get it drained one more time. And then I also bought her this like no ear flap thing. I'll insert a picture. She's obviously not wearing it right now. That seems to be working well because she has a little more freedom than a cone, but it's still holding her ears down to her side. So when she does shake, they're not flapping around. Um, I could tell she doesn't love it because I think it kind of messes with her peripherals a little bit, but she could like chew on her bone and she could play with her toys still. So I feel like it's a little more um, freeing than the cone. I wanted to go get it drained today so that I could try the no ear flap with a freshly drained ear and then maybe that compression over the next few days of her wearing it I mean nearly 24 7 I give her some breaks like this when she's like napping and I know she's not gonna mess with it and I have like full eyes on her but yeah pretty much 24 7 with an empty ear I'm thinking that compression might Kind of slow down the filling up process which can lead to quicker healing because then there's less trauma going on to the ear but that's her ear update she's okay she is okay it's it's not life-threatening which i said in my last video um she really is okay she's just a little uncomfortable but yeah hello welcome back to my channel there's your depressing intro no she'll be good we're about to go to the vet I don't think she knows what that word means, so that's good. And then it's a freaking beautiful day outside. So nice, it's in the low 50s. Alexa, what's the temperature outside right now? It's 48 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, 48. And then I'm gonna go meet Alex and her family out right now. Her family's in town for the next few days and they're just kind of like walking around, sightseeing. I'll go meet them out for a few hours. <laughs> Sorry, it's so loud. They're doing so much construction outside. Come here, let me take off your harness. So I think we're going to do the surgery. Can you sit, babe? Good, sit. The doctor's just like, you could keep getting it drained, but I mean, it's expensive to do every time. I can take off your harness, babe. They think she's a good candidate for it. They already did all her tests and she's like, she's clear to go under, to be put under for the surgery, so. That's good. My only thing is the travel dates and I obviously wanna be here for the surgery. So I think I'm just gonna to have to move around some of my travel, which is fine. There's definitely some flexibility in part of my travel, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Oh my God, listen how loud it is when I open my door. Pretty good windows, damn. Okay, now I think I'm gonna go meet up with the coats for a little bit. They've been out drinking all day though, so I do not know what I'm about to walk into. <laughs> the way that 52 degrees used to be like freezing cold and now I'm like, wow, it's summer. It's a beautiful day. But 52 degrees in California, let alone LA. Beanie, scarf, puffer, Uggs, heater blasted. <laughs> vacuumed my room oh it was so needed it is the next day though i just finished cleaning oh my god that felt so good to do but now i just kind of want to pour a glass of wine and i want to dive in to my fire escape i've showed like little sneak peeks of this but i have all this mini stuff which i'll give you like a proper tour in a sec but i've been waiting for this museum gel to come in and it finally came in which i showed you guys last vlog 
So I think I'm just gonna pour a glass of wine. I'm gonna blast some music and just go in on this. I just got my Bright Cellars box, so I have so much wine to choose from. I think I'm in the mood for a red though. I just love that they send these little wine education cards because otherwise I'm just gonna judge it by its label. That's pretty much the extent of my wine knowledge. Oh my God, look how pretty that one is. Ooh, it, it pairs with garlic mussels and crusty bread. <laughs> oh, that is said crusty bread. Yeah, so all these wine education cards, they like tell you the notes of everything, tells you what temperature to serve the wine, and then it tells you the food pairings. It also tells you like scenario pairings, if that makes sense. Like the, the one that the crusty bread one also says book club discussions. This one is sunsets on the deck, sketchbook doodling. Oh my God, this one frustrating furniture assembly. Should I do this since I'm doing mini furniture? Oh, and it's red. Oh my God, boom. Okay, we're doing this one. Okay, I can't find our wine opener. So I think I have to go ask our neighbor, but I've never talked to our neighbor before. So I'm scared. Okay, I did it. Oh my god. Okay, I need to be quick. Honestly, it was about time that I met one of my neighbors. There we go. Wow, this is nice. Voila. Okay, I'll be right back. It's a Bordeaux red blend medium body with notes of raspberry, pomegranate, dried herbs, and earth. I really wish I could be just like some crazy wine connoisseur that knows everything the second I taste something, but that's why I like Bright Cellars. It's not intimidating. All you have to do is take a seven question quiz. It's so quick. It's about just like, is that a heavy pour? That's normal. It's just about like your general flavor preferences. Like it, it asks like tea or coffee, uh, milk chocolate, dark chocolate. I Just kind of like questions like that. And then based off your results, they put together a box of wines for you. Okay, let's try this. Oh, it smells good. It's not like super, see, I don't know the words, but like alcohol-y. Yum. Oh my God, I really like this. It is like herbal. It pairs with raspberry jam. I have raspberries, let's see. They're washed, don't worry. Okay, it is the raspberries. It like sweetened this up a lot. Mm. Oh my God, I'm literally about to drink this whole glass standing here. If you guys want to check out Bright Sellers, as always, I'll link everything down below. And thank you again, Bright Sellers, for giving my viewers a limited time offer of $100 off their subscription. Just click the link in my description to get started. What am I doing? <laughs> I literally have you on a tripod to do this. I had no intention to like show you guys this, not that I was hiding it, but I don't know, this was kind of just like a little me project that I thought of one night. And then you guys started seeing it in the, obviously, cause it's on my wall. So you would see it in, all, in my past videos. And then people were like, oh my God, I need to know what that is. This is my mini fire escape. As you guys know, I am like obsessed with miniature things. I know I'm not alone in this. It's not that niche of a market. Clearly I was able to buy all this on the internet, but I just love it. I don't know what it is. I've been this way all my life. My mom loves many things. My grandma loved many things. My grandma used to build doll houses. Oh my God, I will try and get footage of it next time I go home. Oh my God, so intricate too. Like, oh, I could cry. It was so cool. Okay, I need to set this down. But yeah, I don't know. I just, I love miniature things and I have so many other things that I could show you at some point, but this is one of my favorites, obviously. Yeah, I got this off Amazon. I, at first I was gonna get it from Urban, but it was literally like $200. And I was like, that seems insane. And I looked on Amazon and it was like 35. So if you want, I do have it linked in my Amazon storefront as well as this stuff, but all the mini stuff I did get off Etsy. I don't, I know you, I don't know if you could see it, but I have my picture of Mac up there. And I kind of just wanted this to be like the fire escape to heaven. And then right underneath it, this is my grandma's fire escape. So my grandma passed away in September, 2020. And um, like I said, she's like pretty much the reason I love miniature things. And I wanted to have, I wanted her to have kind of her own level. Oh my God, I'm like getting choked up. <laughs> has one sip of wine and wants to cry. And then this level is supposed to be just me now, like my life as a young adult now, there's beers here and decks of cards. There's some mini, you know, things if you catch my drift. It's a little lighter, it's so cute. I could say lighter, it's a lighter. This is what I light my candles with. Look at these little cards and it's Actually, this, I'm not holding the full set right now. There's more up there, but it's, I had to punch them all out individually. It is actually a completed set of cards. I got these little beer cans. And then the lower level 
is kind of, I wanted it to be like a romantic vibe. I did like a romantic kind of bistro setting. I even did a mini bottle of wine. Shout out Bryce Hellers. And then these little tiny glasses of wine. Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. Cheers. And then I also got this little mini pair of slippers. Let me show you the box it came in. I couldn't even get rid of the packaging. Hold on. These are the boys. First of all, it came in this little shopping bag with mini paper, like what? And then the slippers came in this little shoe box. The way the paper's wrapped, like a normal pair of shoes. It's really cute. I couldn't get rid of it though. I just simply could not. I also got a little stack of books that go onto that more romantic bistro vibe. The Tale of Peter Rabbit, The Little Prince, The Wind in the Willows, Charlotte's Web, just like little classics. And then I also got a little tiny, I'll say it's a cigarette. Yes, I spent money on this little tiny and then lastly, I got this plant hanger. I actually don't know how I'm gonna hang it though. Also, I ordered a mini plant to put into this plant hanger, but I, it never came. I don't know what happened. Oh, I didn't show you the stuff that, on my grandma's level. Okay, so I got my grandma a rocking chair. My grandma sat in her rocking chair literally all my life out on the porch. She would always sit there and watch my grandpa do yard work. The chair looked a lot like this too. And then I got a little pillow. What I appreciate about all this mini stuff is like it's normal quality. Like it's not just like fabric around a piece of cotton. Like do you see I could put my finger in? Like it's a, it's a real pillowcase. There's so much realism in all of this mini stuff. I think that's what I like about it. It's not just something small like it's small but it's manufactured the same as the big version if that makes sense i also got her a little side table that i'm gonna just like put next to the rock or the rocking chair i got a little radio to put on the little stand that i'm putting next to the rocking chair because she had an old school radio in the backyard that she would always just blast fleetwood mac on just all day I also got her a little tiny watch because I have one of her watches over there that means a lot to me. So I kind of just wanted to have a mini version of it. And then this hanging stained glass little art piece. If you've seen my um, lamp over there, the stained glass green one, she actually made that. She made so much stained glass in her time. So I wanted to kind of give her fire escape a little touch of that. Her drink of a choice was always a gin and tonic. So I got a little mini bottle of gin and then a little tiny glass with a lime on it. Her gin and tonics were like, <laughs> I don't know if this is like bad to say, but growing up, she'd always have like a super cold glass of what looked like water. And I'd always be like, grandma, like your water looks so refreshing. Like, can I have some? She'd be like, no my water get away like she'd always just like make jokes about it and i'm always like what like i'm literally thirsty like let me have some and as i got older i realized it was gin and tonic the whole time and that's why she didn't let me have it which makes sense so cheers grandma and then lastly actually two more things i also got her her own little bag because she was a connoisseur one would say but lastly, I got her a crossword puzzle. This is like the epitome of my grandmother. She, oh my God, it's a full newspaper. Oh, it's a full front and back copy newspaper. It's the New York Times. She used to pick me up from school every single day from age, beginning of school to like, probably like sixth or seventh grade. And then after that, I would just kind of start like doing my own things with my friends. But um, she always had a crossword puzzle and I'd, I'd pull up to her car and she'd keep it in her purse, like folded like this. And she'd always have it just like doing it on her steering wheel. And then she noticed I got there and she'd say, oh, hi. And then she'd have a Lunchable in the back seat for me. All the time, Nacho Lunchable, my absolute favorite. And then I don't even know if this is gonna show up on camera, but I got a tiny, tiny pencil. It even has like a sharp tip. Does it write? Oh no way it writes oh okay that is my tour of miniature things i feel like that was so long-winded but you guys asked so i'm gonna tell you 
Now though, I'm just gonna stick these all down. So I'll probably just do a time lapse of it because that's gonna be very tedious. But I hope you like it because I love it. This is my favorite thing ever and it's so New York and I just felt like I needed to like dive into a hobby. Oh <coughs> God, I feel like there's dust in there right now. All right, let's start this tedious work. put the cards in a formation of red and black, which is a drinking game that we play all the time. So that it looks like we're playing, like in the middle of playing a game. This is like heavy. This is like a nice table. Actually, just kidding. I think I'm gonna do, cause I think red and black is too long of a game for this table. I think I'm gonna do malicious malice. just finished and I only used that much of the glue. You see that tiny bit? This stuff is so good and it I love it because it doesn't dry right away so like you put it on and then you can still move around stuff. I love it so much. It looks so good now that everything's like set. It looks like little people are living here. Let me show you. House tour. Okay here is grandma's lair. So I put her pencil on the edge right there and then her crossword there as if she just got up to go in the kitchen and she just set everything down because she'll be right back. Um, I didn't really know what to do with her watch so I kind of just set it on top but there is her substance of choice, substances of choice and then her little back stock of substances of choice. And then I just did this. I know it's kind of ugly. I just couldn't find a nail, so that works for now. And then here's the next level. So I did a little game of malicious malice. Usually in between these two rows, there is a row of aces, but I obviously just didn't have enough space. And then the rest of the cards, I kind of just set down here because they didn't all fit. But that little tuck is actually filled with cards. And then here is the final level. I did the little bottle of wine, just stuck everything there. I have the Joker poking out of the box of cards. I just love the Joker. It's one of my favorite cards. So he's poking out, you can kind of see. And then the slippers, I just had natural, just kind of like we threw them off our feet kind of thing. Oh my God, this is so dusty. I need to dust it. <laughs> Oh, I love it so much. I'm so glad I did that. And for what it's worth, I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Okay, time definitely got away from me while doing that. I'm running so late, so I'm about to go to this escape room. Wish me luck. It's it's South Park theme, which seems interesting. I don't know much about South Park, so I hope it doesn't make things harder not knowing details, but I'll let you know how it is. Many go in, but few come out alive. So make sure you pay up front. And remember, the clock is ticking. <laughs> the next morning we got home kind of late we ended up going to just like a quick dinner at the smith after the escape room because we were so hungry that escape room was very interesting the room was cool it was it was hard but it was hard in the sense of it didn't make sense like alex and i have done hundreds of escape rooms at this point and i can respect when something's hard because like the storyline's intricate, you have to be creative, or like, you know, it makes sense, but this was just like, literally at one point you had to tap a pair of glasses on a book, but not like reading glasses, like, they were like baseball coach glasses, like fast glasses, on a book, and that had nothing to do with the story, I don't know, it was just like little stuff like that, so I got out with a minute, like 40 something to spare. But nonetheless, it was fun. I like just doing escape rooms, period. So it was just fun to do something. But now I am walking to Whole Foods. I have a few minutes to spare because I'm going to meet my friend at breakfast at like 10. My friend Leslie's in town from Nashville. I have not seen her in literal years, but I'm stopping by Whole Foods on the way because I'm gonna return that St. Patrick's Day hoodie I got. I figured I have enough hoodies. I don't need one that says Pat McCrotch until next year on March 17th. So I didn't even wear it. I didn't even try it on. So I just need to return it. 
Okay, never mind. I just went in there and it said that I have to go to UPS to do the return. I've done every Amazon return here. I don't know, maybe it's something with the seller. Now I'm so early. I literally have 40 minutes until breakfast and I don't know what to do now. Mm -hmm.